Hello. Well, today we will be talking about memory. And memory is that thing that, that I am, that I forgot what it was. <laughs> no, kidding. Okay, so today we're gonna be talking about memory, but memory in our computers. And in a way I'm kidding, but in a way I'm not. We had been spoiled because we use the memory in our devices as a storage that is outside our brains. Because many people like me depend on memory in our devices to remind me of my appointments, to remind me that I have to come here and record the class, and to remind me what I have to talk about when I come over. But memory has so many applications and it's in so many places, so let's get to it. So first of all, I'm going to talk about memory in general, okay? The first thing that I need you to know is that the memory is actually a physical device like the one that you see right there in the picture and it's going to store any or anything, okay? In the case of computer science, as a computer science student, you can think that it will store programs which can run, that can be apps or anything like that, or software, right? Or data that can be used within those programs. There is two kinds of memory and just broadly speaking, first we have primary memory and we have secondary memory and of course that doesn't really tell you anything. But let's get to this. Primary memory is actually the memory that it's in your computer and when you go to Best Buy or somewhere to buy a computer and it says like, oh it has so, many, uh, so much RAM. That is the primary memory. The primary memory is the working memory, the memory that your computer uses to store programs and to run your programs right then and there. And then you have the secondary memory or secondary storage, which is not as important, but it's still very important. But that one, you know, you can just bring like a, like a CD or a DVD drive or something like that and you can just plug it in and you can add memory and you can change devices as long as you have a USB and you can plug a different flash drive or a big hard drive or something you know to store, you will have more secondary memory. So broadly speaking then you know what primary memory is and secondary memory is. But guys, that is for the layman, for somebody that is not as smart as you and is not probably studying computer science. So let's go more in detail and see what else we know about memory. So there are several memory types that's very important to know and I'm going to talk about them all today. First, we're going to start with random access memory. Then we're going to do ROM, which is read-only memory. Then we're going to talk about flash, and it's not flash Gordon, it's flash memory. Then we're going to talk about cache memory. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about virtual memory. As you can see, there is a lot of different memory types, and you need to know them all. And you need to know why they are different, and more importantly, why we need them all. Because they are all needed, and we don't have just something to call them, oh, it's just memory, right? You will see as we go along that some of them are part of the primary memory, let's say, gang, right? And then we have some others that are part of the secondary memory. So let's continue. So we start with primary memory, with the quintessential primary memory, which is the random access memory, okay? Now, this memory is used by programs and data that are currently being accessed, okay, literally, whatever is running in your computer, like for example, in my computer now, right now, uh, PowerPoint is running, so PowerPoint is right now in random access memory, okay? It's volatile, so if you don't save, it's gonna go bye-bye, okay? It's equivalent to your dog eating your homework. It can be upgraded easily, that is really cool. And if you want to know how to upgrade it, you can ask us or you can ask YouTube. And in order to upgrade them, you know, uh, RAM uses uh, expansion modules called a DIM. And DIM is dual inline mem memory mode, okay? So here is the thing. Whenever you buy a computer, you look at the RAM that they have by definition. Now, the more RAM that they have, the more programs that can be running at the same time. There is one very important thing that you cannot uh, ignore. And remember when we talk about operating systems that I told you that operating systems are those things that people tend to ignore and, and they don't even see them. They are sort of invisible. Well, when you get 
your computer, you have to look at the RAM. And when you see an operating system, let's say Windows or a PC, you know, or a Mac operating system, look how many, um, how much RAM it will need in order for it to run. Because if you have, let's say, I'm just going to make this up, you have 10 units of RAM and your operating system takes seven units to, ch to be loaded, and it needs to be loaded because it's gonna be running, right? So if you need those to be loaded, then you have only three more units of memory that you can use for other programs to run on top of the operating system. And let's say that PowerPoint uses two, so now you have just one left, and you open your browser and takes one, then you have your full on, okay? your computer will begin to get slower and slower when you're running out of RAM, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the particular memory that is gonna help RAM do its work. But just please keep in, in mind that programs have to fit. So people don't tend to do this, but if you're looking exactly what you're gonna buy, is check how much RAM, check how much RAM is, in, is used for the operating system, and if you tend to play music, be on Skype, and you know, look at all the different applications that you have and check out how much RAM each one of them uses. Do not try, by all means, not to go above your RAM capacity. If you do and you do often, then maybe you wanna consider you know, expanding that, you know, make it beef it up, okay? So let's go to the next kind of memory. Okay, so now we have the read-only memory or ROM. In here, uh, we will keep the data even when it's unpowered. In RAM, one of the things is that if in RAM, if you unplug your computer, data is gone. In here, it stays, okay? It stays forever, actually, and it's used to store any information that has to remain in the computer for the duration or for the life of the device, okay? And it cannot be modified. So let me stress this out, okay? RAM the one that I talked before, if you unplug your device, if your device is not powered, whatever is in RAM is gone. That's why they tell you, save your work, right? Because if you don't save and something happens, gone, okay? If you have a laptop, not such a big deal if you have battery because the, you know it keeps your ROM going. However, I mean your RAM going. When you have ROM, it doesn't matter if you unplug the computer, if you turn it off, if you turn it off for a whole year, it doesn't really matter because everything stays there. All the information that helps uh, your computer run is in ROM. Now, I told you that your operating system needs to be loaded into your computer, but it loads into RAM, right? But who tells the operating system to go from the hard drive and move into RAM? That is ROM, and it sounds like I am Dr. Seuss in here, but no. Uh, so you got ROM that tells you what to do, okay? So when your computer first starts, it goes to ROM because that memory stays there forever, and it's gonna help your computer know what to do when it first boots. So it's gonna run, it says, hey, load the operating system for the computer, otherwise the computer cannot work. So it goes to the hard drive and grabs the operating system and puts it into RAM, and then you see your computer come alive, right? So it's loaded already into RAM. And your ROM cannot be modified because the manufacturer has it set so that it can load that operating system. And also, not just that, but many other uh, instructions like, like using the keyboard and the ports and enabling everything that you use within your computer. So all of those things are in ROM. Just like I told you that RAM holds the operating system in a computer, laptop, or desktop, your, the operating system for your cell phones or mobile devices are actually stored in ROM. There is no, like, oh, I'm stored it in a hard drive and then put it into RAM. No, cell phones and mobile devices are different. So ROM is where the operating system for those devices are stored. So as you can see, two kinds of memory already and quite important. Let's go to the next one. So now we have our good friend, the flash memory. And I say good friend because we all have one, right? So this one is also known as solid state storage, which means in other words that it doesn't have any moving parts like hard drives do. So it's just like a chunk of something. It's purely electronic, okay? Now, it has the good stuff from other memories, okay? For example, it can be changed just like RAM is, you know? I can, but remember RAM will get deleted if nothing, if it doesn't have power. 
However, this one doesn't. So it's just like rum on that. So it grabbed the good things on one and the good things in the other. It may be used to store something, you know, like the BIOS, like the same information that we use in ROM to load, you know, to start a device. And of course, is used in many, many mobile devices. When we talk about uh, Flash being used in uh, the startup, we have uh, the, operating, the Windows operating system, the latest, um, can be stored actually in a flash drive and you can grab it and you can take it and you can boot a computer right from a flash drive, okay? There is also complete versions of Linux that can run from a flash device as well. Now, the flash memory is used in many devices and I know that you know that because you have things like, oh, where is my memory card, right? When you're thinking about your phone and the memory card, that is flash memory. Or when you have your camera and you have like, you change memory cards, that's again flash, and all those flash drives that we have and you forget in the labs here at Leeward, they are also flash, okay? Let's continue. So cache memory, ooh, this is, a, I remember when it first came out was so, so expensive and I think it still is very expensive, okay? But it's a temporary, it's a high speed kind of memory, okay? Whenever programs are executing, okay, they are in RAM. So the CPU goes to RAM, grabs the instructions, and works with them, okay? But let's say, just like we saw in the slide, you have the CPU, you have the ca cache memory, and you have RAM. So RAM, from CPU to RAM, you go all the way here. You know, but it's kind of close, but not as close as cache. Cache is right in the middle. So if it's much smaller than RAM, but it holds instructions that need to be accessed really super, super quick. And if you have a larger cache, then your programs are gonna run faster. Let's go back into the slide because I want you to look at how they are positioned. So as you can see in here, then you have the CPU and cache. Cache is right in between the CPU and RAM. So it's more easily accessible. And actually, if you look at the inside of the computer, cache is kind of really, really almost inside the CPU, okay? Now, let's take a look at our next one, which is virtual memory, okay? And virtual memory is used instead of RAM as primary storage, okay? So we have the CPU, we have RAM, and somewhere in there in between is the cache, right? But I'm not gonna talk about that one because we are already done with that. And we look at the hard drive in the right side. If you buy a computer and you have 10 units of RAM per se, and you are using 12, where are those extra two units coming from? Well, they are coming from virtual memory, okay? What happens is that RAM is used, okay? But whatever else you need to run that code, your computer is gonna actually put it in the hard drive and go all the way from the CPU to passing RAM and go all the way to the hard drive to run a program. That's when your computer is still working, but it's really slow. It's really slow because the whole program cannot be loaded into RAM. So part of it is in the hard drive and it needs to hold every instruction and everything all the way from virtual memory. So virtual memory helps you a lot, but whenever you're using it, your computer is already running slow, okay? So now you learn a lot about memory and all of those things are for you to keep in mind. I'll see you around.